Go. Hi, I'm Angela Giles. I'm a lead programmer with the Boston Women's Film Festival. And tonight we're going to be talking about the film Endless. Uh, we've got uh, a wonderful opportunity to speak with the film's director, Miriam Zahir Mayer. I hope I got it close to right. Um, if Sean could change the view, or actually I can change the view, sorry. So there we go, there's Miriam on my screen. Uh, so welcome, and we also have Matthew Nash joining us for the conversation. Um, this film was is actually one of my favorites from the fest for a number of reasons. I think that uh, from the opening scenes, before we even get into the film where you're talking about how the, this is for all of the people whose stories couldn't be told or the people who couldn't tell their stories, that captured me straight away. Um, and then I, I think the film itself, um, and I feel odd saying this, but it's very lovely. Um, it's a very beautiful film in its use of imagery and silence. And um, there's the dialogue is sparse and there's so much conveyed through action and motion, I think. Um, and those films are right up my alley. Um, so, you know, I. I feel very weird saying that I really liked the film because the subject matter is, is really tough. Um, it's about, uh, I don't know what the proper word is. I, I always refer to it as like a dowry suicide or some a woman who's in an arranged marriage and chooses to die rather than go through with the marriage, which um, is obviously a hard choice to make. But I think you, you tell the story very artfully and I'm wondering what made you feel driven to tell this particular story oh, okay so uh i've i've been living in um, a part of iran uh, which um, not normally but a lot of i've seen a lot of girl in that area um, did the same thing um and um one day i was i was in a cemetery and uh, i was talking to a woman and she was like look at that grave it's a 19 years old girl um, burned herself because of uh, marriage stuff like that. And then look at that, that, that girl was 24 years old and, and she burned herself for the same reason. And then look at that, I, I, I was like, okay, 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 stop, stop. What is going on here? <clears throat> How many have you had uh, so far to, uh, that did the same thing? And there, um, it grabbed my attention two years before I start writing um, the script. And then mm -hmm. I was like, mm, yes, that would be, that would be a great thing to write about. And then I start writing, but not about the girl, about the mom who, yes. who felt guilty about um, what uh, she has done. You know, she forced her, that's that's what their no, the parent normally do right. uh, for their very 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 young um, daughters to force them to um, do so, and um, that was a terrible story. Uh, also, I have seen a family; uh, they had three daughters, and all three daughters did the same thing. Oh my god! And that was so horrible for me, and. Um, I started writing it. Yeah, no, I, I firmly believe that um, art is one of the most revolutionary things that we can do um, the making of art. And so I appreciate the fact that you took the time and energy to get the, these stories out here. And I, I think telling it from the viewpoint of the mother was particularly compelling because, you know, I think it's, I don't want to say easy, but it, it's more conventional to tell the story from the daughter's point of view, or perhaps even from her betrothed's point of view. But I think from from the the burden the mother has to carry, and we see that from the beginning. And it her dialogue, the dialogue the mother has, is very interesting to me because it's very repetitive. And you know, she's she'll when she speaks, she often says the same thing two or three times over. Um, and it's almost as if she's sort of in this cycle of um, just in the moment and reliving a moment and reliving a moment and reliving a moment. And I'm curious as to how you, you saw the mother in your mind and how that character formed 
um, and if she met your expectations on the screen. Yeah, actually I um, chose the mother, the actor uh, on purpose because she had uh, such, such, not exactly the same thing, but such close um, thing happened to her. And I chose her, her because he, she was like doing her, her own story. Um, mm. when, when she was repeating and repeating and repeating, she, something in uh, her brain repeated, um, just kept repeating again and again and again, the same thing. And when I asked her to lay down on the, uh, on the grave, she was thinking about laying down on um, his uh, on her own child uh, grave, and the the sense that she gave uh, was like mm, the the actual thing. And uh, a lot of scenes we had the we had the same situation. Uh, for example, in when she was um, um, uh, spinning in the wedding with. Uh, yes based on her head, um, something like that happened in uh, her funeral, um, her uh, son's funeral. She stood up and start spinning, spinning and dancing and dancing until uh, she passed out. And wow. that, that was the real thing actually. And it's, it was so uh, impressive. No, I, I agree with you. Um, I, I also liked the sort of idea of hope for the future that you you left us with with the young with the young child, the beautiful young young woman that you have in the film, um, and how she starts to, I think, get creep into Miriam's to be into be Miriam's heart uh, throughout the film, and watching that and watching her defenses go down and was really touching and I think it was really well done and coupled with the imagery that we saw of, of the mother remembering her daughter and just seeing her daughter in the wedding dress which was a very powerful image particularly with the starkness of the landscape you know and you just kept sort of going back over imagery and back over imagery and back over imagery um, and I just I appreciated the fact that after telling such a story that you left us with a hopeful uh, a bit of a hopeful image at the end. Yeah. Um, because I, I do think that uh, and I, there is hope for a lot of for these women, right? And obviously there needs to be a big cultural shift and we don't need to get into all of the politics of it because I am of your view, um, I suspect, on this whole thing. But I think it is an art form. I, what you did was really incredibly well done. I'm curious about the title. How did you come up with the title? And is the ti did the title translate properly in your mind from, from what it would have been in another language? Um, in my language, it's the same. Uh, okay. Endless, in my language, it's B Payan. Okay. And um, endless, the whole story is endless. We, we have had such stories in all over the world and never ends you know um, even we we talk about that we um, participate in communication and uh, communities and talk a lot about those and uh, but we still have such a problem so it's an endless story but it, it's a question mark yes we know, yeah we don't know it's still endless endless you know right there, again I think that there's a bit of hope there yeah exactly um if you notice that all uh, the little girls um ca dialogues are in a question question yeah. question question and she never answered the question so a lot of question for female which um don't have any answer and it's a a, a, an endless circle, never end circle. So now I'm so, going to have to go and watch it again. Yeah. 
because I, I did notice that her questions were unanswered, but I hadn't picked up on the fact that she was only speaking in questions. Yeah. So that's that's a fascinating. Yeah. Um, thank you for that that bit of I don't know that little treasure. Uh, Matthew, what did you think of the film? Oh, I love it. Obviously. Um, I in, know you, Matthew. Hi, Mariam. I haven't seen you in so long. Um, no, as an editor, it's it's always a challenge to work in a film that's not your native language. It's always a challenge to work in a film that's not stylistically something that you're you know uh, familiar with. So I had to spend a lot of time watching Iranian film and and uh, film from that region to kind of familiarize myself with the vocabulary. Um, I think Miriam presented me an eight hour assembly edit when we first started. So it was, there was a lot to work with. Um, but no, it was, it was wonderful to work on the film and to really learn, you know, as just in this 10 minutes that we've been talking with Miriam, you can see how many details there are and how many subtleties there are and trying to, um, trying to figure out how to get all of those into the film in a way that was still fun and beautiful to watch and, and that moved along relatively quickly by Iranian film standards. Um, so no, it's it's beautiful. I mean, there's moments in there that I just really love that, um, you know, the scene in the rain, which really came together in editing so well. Um, the scene in the river really came together mm -hmm. in editing so well. And th so those are moments to be really proud of where Miriam and her team made beautiful footage and then we were able to sit together and elevate it and really find the, the beauty in the story. So that was, that was a real joy in making the film. And I, I watched it again yesterday. I, I still love watching this movie. I, I still enjoy uh, the experience of it. So it, it's an honor to be a part of the film. No, I, I can't even imagine because there is and your use of the word fun um, struck me initially as kind of weird, but I, I can see how it, actually it would be fun because it is almost like a puzzle to take all of this um, footage, which I can't even imagine how you chose uh, and what you had to discard, uh, because what, you, what we're presented with is so exquisite. Well, I'll tell you, um, we got to the point in editing where um, I would reach towards the delete key and Marion would reach out and slap my hand because, you know, every, every little bit of footage that we took away, you know, was, was, you know, shrinking it down to a two hour timeline. But at the same time, we were, we were losing some bit of the, the beautiful footage that she'd made. So I remember a few moments where she was like, no, don't do that. Don't do that because well, that, that delete key was, was, was her enemy, but it was necessary to really trim it down to something that, that, that um, said what she wanted to say, so. Well, I think so, and because so much of the film is silent uh, and really we're just watching the movements of the characters and, and in particular, I was struck by the beauty of how we, the, the scene where the mother is walking up the road and then there's a, I don't, I don't know the proper term for it, but then all of a sudden she's closer on the road. And then all of a sudden she's closer on the road. That was handled so well. And we saw the passage of time and we knew that she was moving, but it was just elegant. And the premise of the film is so horrific. And every time I saw a match lit in the film or anything that looked like smoke. And when we had the, the couple of scenes where we saw the actual fire burning, or when we saw the, the mother in the room scrubbing, trying to scrub the soot off of things. I mean, that's real horror and terror in the film. And you counterbalance it with such, with a lovely scene of children playing together, right? And that ba striking that balance without feeling heavy handed or or without making one feel like it's patronizing the other i think is very it's is very challenging and it speaks probably a little bit to matthew's skills i don't want Thank to you. short change him but i think also to your vision and how you wanted to make sure that people understood perhaps the beauty in the culture as well as the negative underpinnings of it um, I was curious about the two boys who played with the young woman and how we, we kept hearing like, this isn't a game for girls, this isn't a game for girls. Uh, and what, what you were intending for us to understand from that or what, because that, that part I was just like, oh, patriarchy's at it again, it's starting so early. And you know, it's just being excluded so early and 
I want her to play this game. So I, I was curious as to how you were wanting that to be received by the viewer and, and what made you choose that particular dynamic. It's a question for me. Yes, you please, Miriam. So, um, uh, yes, actually, you got the right thing. And um, I chose that kind of um, particular playing, which you um, decide for this little stick, which way to go. This little stay, stick mm, doesn't have any, any choice. Whoever comes and just hit it, that part. Okay, I decide you go that part. And I decide you go that, that way. I decide you go that way. And if you um, see that stick uh, from the middle of the movie until the end, you see the stick half burned, half, um, yes. half burned. And it, it's a kind of burning by, by the time. And um, first the stick just uh, is in a circle, mm -hmm. an imaginary circle, and then boys decide which way to go. Um, I mm, chose that kind of playing on purpose because of this. It's an unfair, um, unfair playing, unfair game actually. Well, what was it me, like? For, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, um, using the stick as part of the metaphor of the film, there's a moment where uh, B. Merriam takes it from the children and digs up the soil to put in the pot. Yes. And then puts the plants in the pot. And this, the stick moves from game to utility, moves from child to adult. It, it, it moves around as a metaphor throughout the film in so many different ways. And it, um, you know, it's, it's actually a character to keep track of in some ways. Mm. That's interesting. I like that. Um, Miriam, what was it like trying to tell this very female story and, and working with a male editor? Um, that was not that much hard for me because um, um, this particular male <laughs> editor uh, totally under uh, understand um the story understand the female stuff like that um for example one day i uh, i told him um my husband doesn't like i i put on for example um, this coat and he said that i never told my to my um, my wife to do what to wear, what not to wear, you know, and I totally understand that he knows what 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 is going on. He knows about mm, not some such patriarchy is going right. on in our country, and um, she uh, that that that's why. I, I worked with uh, him very easy and he was he was so good. He did a great job. Thank you, Miriam. I mean, I think I, I will say that we can all strive to do better, but I, I try to learn from the people around me and, and take inspiration from wonderful people that I get to work with. And it was, yeah, I learned so much from working with you. You told me so much about your family and your culture and your experiences and what it was like to move to America. and. And you know how how much changed when you moved here, and those are your stories to tell. I won't I won't share them, but you know I learned so much from from your stories, and and to take all of that and to try to learn from the script and the film, you know it's 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 not my job to it's my it's it's my job to learn all the time every day. So it was I really loved working on this film for that reason. I feel like I I, I grew so much, and it was wonderful to work with you. So. Why would you fight against that? Why would you resist that? No, I agree. And I think even as a viewer, these stories are almost sacred, right? These women who have come to this conclusion and decided that this is the only way out for them. Um, and I, 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 I can't imagine how that feels. Um, but, and so to watch it presented, it feels humbling. Um, for a number of reasons, for, because I've not been forced into that situation. 
um, because I'm I'm able to understand and watch, and and I don't I don't want to say appreciate. I, I struggle with words to to apply to the film because I want to say all these beautiful glowing things, but the subject matter um, again is is really horrific. But watching it is was a very humbling experience because you're right. You're giving voice to to so many women who cannot tell their stories or why they made the particular decision that they did, only that they did it. And I think, again, going through the mother's eyes um, in sort of like a woman looking at the, what the society is doing to other women, particularly her daughter, is very powerful. Uh, I was curious about the name and its similarity to your name and what made you settle on um, calling her be Miriam? Yeah, the, the prefix uh, of B um, mm -hmm. shows, um, shows that this woman is from a very big and like um, royalty um, family okay. in that area. So it's and, an honorific title? Yeah. And then Miriam, I put that Miriam because uh, I do the same thing. I never talk about, you know, I never honk a horn when I driving. I never complain. I never, mm, I don't know. Um, uh, I, I think if I was B. Mariam, I did the same thing. Mm. That's why um, it's a kind of um, presentation of my uh, own story mm -hmm. uh, okay. not exactly but mm, my behavior uh, in um, when I force um, I face to such things such um, um, accidents something like that yeah Mary, How did can, I was going to ask uh, related to the honorific of B Miriam can you talk about the significance of the village where you filmed this mm, uh, yeah the village uh, uh, was uh, a kind of um, very famous village in that area. Uh, a lot of people going there and then um, just um, look around and it, it's, it's a kind of step-step uh, uh, village. Well, it's also very old, right? Yeah, very old. Uh, I don't know, probably thousands. Uh, um, it's really a good village. Sorry, has, I, I, sorry, Angela. Has this film been shown uh, at all in Iran? Uh, not in Iran, no. Um, but uh, your festival is our 30th uh, mm -hmm. yeah, um, international. Uh, Good, so uh, it's getting out there. Yeah. Good. Um, how, how do you think making this film and telling this story changed you? Change? audience view or? No, changed you personally, because I would imagine that going so deep into the character and the story would uh, shift something or, or give you a different perspective maybe. Um, actually, it didn't change me. Really? I, I hope to make change on other people. It okay. didn't change me at all. Um, I still think about that the same way that before you okay know. so it really just gave you a, a way to tell your yeah. opinions and views yeah now the picture behind you i'm curious as to what that yeah. is <laughs> yeah it's um two hands, two hands yeah of uh, kids they are telling a story it's like a puppet show they are playing together okay and they're like Hey mom, how are you? And then they are talking together, and it's a screenshot of my new movie, um, which finished two three days ago. And what is this? Is the subject matter similar to this, or is it different? Uh, somehow, yes. It's about a little girl asking uh, his mom how a woman gets pregnant, and mom say something like something not true and then she uh, gets into trouble because she thinks oh she's gonna get a mom 
Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, model. Yeah, and uh, it's a kind of, um, we'll see. <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil it, but the, time, the log line is this. And uh, we filmed it in the same area. Really? <laughs> same language. <laughs> wow. Yeah, same village, even same village. That's fascinating. Um, so it sounds like you're finding your foothold as a feminist filmmaker. Yeah, exactly. Is that fair to say? That's good. That's good. <laughs> I, I hope to give voice to voiceless women around the world. It doesn't matter, US, uh, Iran, um, India, it, it doesn't matter which country. Um, I hope to give voices to voiceless women. Well, the story in Endless certainly is not one that's um, unique to Iran. It, it takes place in Pakistan and yeah. India and in all sorts of, of countries, which is why I think it's an incredibly important story to be aware of because a lot of women, I think particularly in the US, don't necessarily understand that that happens. And the idea of arranged marriage, I think we can conceptualize of, but yeah. self-immolation as a way to escape it, um, I, I think is something that we really don't fully comprehend. Uh, and is prevalence, certainly, is something that I don't know that the world pays attention to as much as they should. So I, I truly appreciate your putting this film out into the world. Um, it's good. Matthew, were you surprised when you first were introduced to the project or how did you come to work with Miriam? Um, originally, well, Miriam uh, studied at the school that I work at and she reached out to see if I knew a student who could edit the film. And then the more I learned about it, I realized that I wanted to work on the film. I, I actually remember talking with you about this film in Berlin. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's I mean, it's, I'm really proud of Miriam. I'm really proud of the film. Um, but yeah, it was, it, it was a conscious decision that I wanted to be part of something this challenging and this, you know, and when I started seeing the footage, how could you not want to edit that footage? What, what, what person doesn't want to edit that footage? It's gorgeous. No, um, I mean, it, you could, it could be honestly a, a travelogue for, for that particular area in that village because it, it is so stunning. I could send and you seven hours of outtake footage that they could use for, for travelogues. There's so much. Um, so no, and then and when we when I started talking with Miriam about the story, and we started you know putting together scenes and seeing how it came together, um, you know they they didn't record a lot of sync audio. A lot of the audio in the final film was created in post production. So I I mostly cut the film as a as a literally a silent film without even the ambient. Oh, well, that's um, fascinating. And then later on we worked with the uh, the sound designer to put to put the sound in place. So. Um, if I may, you literally gave voice to the women in the process the, of making the, the film. That is what Miriam it, did. It, it was created silently and then you gave voice to them. So, yes. wow. Um, so wow. yeah, it was, I mean, it was many challenges, but like Miriam is a delight to work with. And, you know, we, we, we put in the time and, and, and made the film happen. So, you know, it's, it's, it's the gift that keeps on giving it. You know, so many people that I worked with on this film are friends and, and I'm excited for Miriam's new film. I can't wait to see what is in store because, you know, all filmmakers grow from project to project to project. And if this is, you know, her last, what, what's the next one going to look like? Because we're just building on such a great foundation. So, well, it, I say we, I don't even know if I'm working on the next one, but Miriam is definitely building on a great foundation. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, when this film came, came to us, it came in a very unexpected way. Um, and, and I watched it and started talking to the rest of the film festival group about it um, because it is so stunning. It's just a staggering film to watch. And the story and, and the beauty of it is precisely in my mind, what this festival is about, which is telling stories in a way that you know someone thinks that they should be told and, and the important stories and giving voice to people where you know they don't have the voices so um thank you Miriam very much for throwing your film on film freeway we wouldn't have come across it otherwise 
Um, it's been a pleasure to speak with you. And I, I can't say enough about this film. It's endless. If you uh, haven't had a chance to see it, watch it. Keep an eye out for Miriam's work because she has got a really gorgeous feminist streak in her uh, and her art proves it out. So thank, thank you for the conversation, guys. Thank you for having me.